Om Amnesty som är här. Sedan Fides tog över makten i Ungern 2010 har det ungerska samhället förändrats. Medier tystas ner och kritiska journalister avskedas. Vad får det för konsekvenser för yttrandefriheten? Vi välkomnar Ginej Orshoja, generalsekreterare i Amnesty International i Ungern. Peter Karlsson, Svenska Penn och samtalet leds av Ulf B. Andersson från Amnesty Press. Och det här samtalet genomförs på engelska. Ni är hjärtligt välkomna. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Ulf B. Andersson. I'm the editor-in-chief of Amnesty Press, uh, the magazine of Amnesty International in Sweden. And Amnesty has a monitor down there, and there is a petition about the refugee situation that you can go and sign. I will also mention that Silk, which they, they have their monitor over there, they just have published a new book called Hey, Herr Diktator. It was the phrase that uh, Jean-Claude Juncker used when he met Viktor Orban, the Hungarian Prime Minister, at the EU summit in Riga. And I really recommend this new book. I read it during the weekend. It's really good. Uh, we will talk about media situation, but we will start with the present refugee crisis. And just uh, as a short thought that This is not the first time that, that uh, we have headlines about the refugee crisis at the Hungarian borders. In uh, 1956, there were 200,000 Hungarians leaving Hungary after the crushed Hungarian revolution, and they went abroad, and there was a big crisis. UNHCR were having conferences where to put these 200,000 Hungarian refugees. 37 countries, including Bolivia, Jordan, Lebanon, etc., accepted the refugees. 8,000 of them came to Sweden and got asylum here. Now it's, a, it's another story. Now, now the Hungarian authorities are trying to close the borders. And Orsi, you have been down to this area a few times during the last few weeks. Can you tell us something about your impressions? Yes, uh, Wolf. Unfortunately, the authorities are not just trying to close the borders, but they have actually closed the borders in front of those who are seeking international protection. On the southern border, Hungary has built a fence, a 175 kilometer fence, four meters high, with NATO blades. Even when you touch it, it's pretty dangerous. Uh, however, lately, when the asylum seekers realize that physically they cannot access their, uh, they, they do not have access to asylum, they actually start now going towards Croatia but there's no more fence because our fence ends at some point so so now there will be probably a secondary um, part of that but but uh, the, it, it, it is very hard not to see the situation that we do not want to care about these people it's very hard to see any constructivism it's very hard to see any humanity in the actions what the government has taken over the past few weeks we feel that it is very very concerning and especially to a nation who has itself gone through I think forgetting solidarity is something really sad, and I'm very ashamed about my country for that. And from Amnesty, you are saying that the Hungarian government they should fulfill their international obligations about refugees. Do, do you, is anyone listening to you today? Do you get any response from the government? Uh, not exactly. It's very hard to engage with the government. Uh, it has been very hard to engage with in the past few years. We try it. Perhaps we could try it even better. Perhaps we also have a place to improve. Still, we have difficulties uh, engaging in consultation. UNHCR, Hungarian Helsinki Committee, since 2012 has been raising concerns and has notified the government of the possible um, human rights violations that the government is currently committing. We did not uh, find listening ears. Uh, we even now try to document all the, all, the, all the cases when Hungary is violating its international obligations and when Hungary is violating its own constitution. Uh, and we meanwhile also constantly remind the European Union because it's also the other part of the story. It's not just Hungary's problem that, that a joint thinking and the joint solution should be brought up. Meanwhile, the European Union, for example, has offered quite some help. Interestingly, the Hungarian government has denounced them. Why? That's something we never understood. 
So there is a lot of uh, human rights violations going on, and at the end of the day, it is again the, the innocent people who have to suffer it. Uh, b before we, we come to, to how media is portraying it in Hungary, uh, the Hungarian government, they are uh, talking about like Viktor Orban saying that uh, uh, our borders are in danger, uh, Hungary and the whole of Europe is in danger, and the foreign minister, Peter Sijarto, he was in hard talk, saying that the, it's an international media campaign against, against Hungary now, and they're just defending the borders. Uh, ordinary Hungarians, do they believe this picture that is given from the government? Uh, I think uh, I think most of the people in Hungary do think that we are under attack. They do think that we have to be afraid of these people. Uh, also, because unfortunately, in the government media, sorry, in the national media, which is very government controlled, all you can hear is constantly that these migrants are coming. They are leaving trash behind. They want to take our jobs. They shout. They attack Hungarian police. Meanwhile, it was also given as a as a instruction apparently that the media cannot show pictures of kids and of women maybe because then you would start to feel empathic about them it's always male shown they are shown mostly when they got very furious at some point when they are doing this with their hands so it's it's again it's very hard not to have the feeling that the central media is trying to send a message that indeed Hungary needs to be protected it is, it's somebody who has studied law, like our prime minister, should know that there's no way that you need to protect your country from refugees. Refugees are those who are fleeing war, persecution, and human rights violations. They are not enemies. They are people who need help. But portraying them in a way that we need to protect our border is very much against European values, I think. Uh, Peter Carlson, uh, in the year of 2010, uh, Viktor Orban formed the first Fidesz government after uh, the elections and he immediately started to change the constitution and he took control over media. Can you describe why is it so important to, to take control of media and how can you do it? It's no official censorship in Hungary today. Well, uh, one of the reasons he, he wanted to do it is that uh, there was a Fidesz government in 1998 to 2002 and uh, Fidesz lost the elections in 2002 um, and much of the reason is that they thought that, that, that they didn't uh, get their message through in, in the media. Uh, that the media was actually working against them. So uh, during the, the years in opposition, they they started to to um, they they realized they had to have to do something with media because I, they, they think they can they can use the media to to um, to get their message through and and tell their view of the story and and influence people to think like them. Uh, so in 2010, as soon as the, more or less as soon as they can, came into power, they started changing, that was one of the first things they changed, the media law. Uh, I mean, they had, um, they, in the elections in 2010, they got 52% of the votes, but also more than two-thirds of the parliament, which meant that they could change uh, legislation in, in a way that, that, um, uh, that is very hard to change. They, they, they made these uh, so-called cardinal laws on a number of, of uh, different areas uh, that are... So if they would s at any time lose the power, still their laws would, would, uh, would, would still be active. Um. Yeah, and, and there was a lot of protests. There were big demonstrations in, in Budapest against this media law. Um, and also protests for, from uh, politicians and governments and of course organizations like Amnesty and um, Committee for Protection of Journalists, etc. But it, so far it has been no, no, not successful with the protests. They are just carrying on the project, the government. They are and they, I mean, they have... A, a, a a couple of ways of, of, of sort of saying it, yes, with maybe we are taking more control of, of public service media, but actually people don't watch public service television or that much. 
that that's that's their explanation. So it wouldn't really matter. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's a quite a complex situation. I mean, the whole media situation is you, you you have a lot of mainstream media, old print media. You have the public service television and things like that. But there's also a huge, uh, large number of online medias. A lot from from the extreme right to a very liberal or left wing and and everything in between. Um, so, um, um, I mean, you, you can't really say there's censorship, but when it comes to, to the big mainstream media, and especially public service media, it, it's effectively uh, a government propaganda channel, more or less. There, there was a heated debate here at the book fair uh, the other day about media situation in Hungary and one Hungarian journalist said that oh it's no problem all media are free and if journalists are doing their job it's they have no problem and uh, there was some two other part participants saying that okay the problem is about self censorship well, do you do you, uh, do you agree i mean i guess you you could say may, maybe I mean in, in in some ways that there's self censorship in, in some ways some some things you don't say but I think it's really strong in 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 Hungary you, you hear reports uh, from that I mean if, for example in in the public service media they they kicked out more than a thousand journalists uh, a lot of them suspect that it is for political reasons because they have been doing their job as investigative journalists uh, there, there's been no such official explanation but if you look at how at the same time uh, the public service uh, are reporting about uh, political events in in Hungary well you can see there's definitely a shift in that way so so and of course a lot of people are are I mean it's not a huge. Uh, it's not a huge business, uh, and if you if you lose your job, where where do you go? You you have a family. You 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 you, you have you have to live. Uh, so a lot of people they choose to uh, to conform uh, and not really speaking their minds and not really be as as you know do, be really as as. Um, doing investigative yeah. reporting and things like that. Uh, also, during this present crisis, there has also been a tremendous support from ordinary Hungarians and NGOs uh, helping refugees coming. Uh, and we've seen several reportages fr from the outside the train station in Budapest. Is this covered by, by public service media? Yes, it is now covered, or, although I'm here in, Switzer in uh, sorry, Sweden since Thursday, but I've heard that apparently on Central TV, they keep saying how all these civil people, they had the transparent, intransparent money, they started to attack all those civil people when they realized that the government is not providing any humanitarian service from their own pockets and from their own free time. Some over 10, 15,000 people actually organized full humanitarian service to thousands of people per day, including food, water, uh, sanitary things, things, medicines, they even got a, an ambulance. And now this government is attacking them in the public media. All you can hear is these are, they, are, they were financed by foreign money. Where is their money coming from? Where? From everyday people who were paying instead of the money. So I, when I'm going to go home, I think I'm going to be even more furious when I really see it for myself. Because I think this is something totally unacceptable. So this is how the, the public TV is now covering it. Although these people for about now 78 days, I think, so many of them, even people who never helped or never volunteered, they are there. They are there sometimes until 5 o'clock in the morning. You pick the trash, you have them, you set up tents, you organize for blankets, and the state is nowhere. And in, in my city, for example, in Debrecen, they, the state was even not uh, agreeing to provide toilets, mobile toilets, to put at the station. Why? Because then all the people go and have, do their things in the surroundings, and then you can say, look at all these immigrants. This is how they behave. And this is the most... Uh, one of the most annoying things about this and how all these people are being, I think, totally humiliated and totally, yeah, I think it's humiliation that is, that is the best words when they were just regular people like us. And, uh, and for this I'm very mad. Yeah, I, 
There's also, I mean, as you say, in the government, uh, it, well, in the in public service, television, uh, reporting about the volunteer groups, but they also, I mean, it's really strange how uh, I, um, in, the, in the last month, two months, I've been watching Hungarian uh, <laughs> public service television, the, the news hour there a couple of times. It's like 40, 45 minutes is only about the refugee situa situation. They, they um, Migrant, migrant, the mi no refugees, sorry, 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 sorry migrant. They, yeah, because because they refugee you hear that you should be sorry for its migrant so and even the Latin word because we would have a Hungarian for, for migrant but they use migrant so that it's a totally distant something yeah and actually a lot of the time they talk about illegal migrants even before they reach the Hungarian border how do they know that uh, but it, 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 there is some I mean they, they are creating fear uh, also in, 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 with terrorism because that we yeah. haven't mentioned they also like to say that the reason why we need to protect our country is because of the terrorists uh, and just yesterday uh, there was an investigative journalist who found out that uh, the central TV again was showing a picture of a then terrorist and now at the border and it turned out that the terrorist they've shown wasn't the same person as the photograph person at the border also because that person is dead since weeks this is one of the things the other thing is that at the border a uh, few days ago uh, when refugees who were then still peaceful, they were water cannon, tear gas, including myself, because you know we were observers, so you need to get them out as well. Then the state even said that we identified the terrorists from that group and we have caught these terrorists. And then they are like, yeah, first of all, you did not even enter Serbia because everybody was just, you know, all the police were, by the way, on one side. And then it turned out that, yeah, terrorist, meaning that this person became a terrorist here because was throwing stones at the Hungarian authorities. And they keep fearing the Hungarian people, which is something that I think also the government should be hold, held accountable because it's also not funny when people are in real fear. And about 67% of Hungarians just want to get the refugees out and I'm sure they wouldn't give the same answers if it hadn't been with all this incitement to hatred and fear. Yeah, uh, Just to say that uh, Peter Carlson is uh, speaking Hungarian so he, he has uh, no problems following the news. Um, let's put uh, Mick, uh, Mr. Viktor Orban, the Prime Minister, in a political context. Uh, he was the, the, the star of this Fidesz party in 1989 and he was very young, 26 years old, looked like a long-haired hippie and then he made a speech at the reburial of Imre Noc, uh, the leader of the Hungarian Revolution and he was demanding the Soviet troops out of Hungary, that was in June 1989 and now he is giving speeches about illiberal democracy and mentioning Russia, China, Turkey as maybe some kind of examples. Uh, what has happened to, to Viktor Orban? I, th I think um, actually a lot of it is about um, power. I mean, they, they discovered in the mid-90s that that there was a, there had been a right-wing government in the in the early 90s, and that when that fell apart, they they sort of realized there was a big area on on the right where they could could find new voters. So they started using a more conservative rhetoric, more nationalist rhetoric. Uh, so it, it actually started at, with, with the first Orban government in 19, 1998, uh, but but especially the last couple of years, it's it's re been really more intense. There have been a couple of things in between, also that 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 sort of. Uh, radicalized this. So, uh, there, there was there was one uh, one event in 2006 with with. Um, um, the, the, the riots in, yeah, in the Budapest. Riot, yeah, yeah, the riots uh, uh, in 2006 yeah. against the socialist government. Uh, and he sort of tapped into a, a sort of uh, anti-socialist. These are the, the, still the communists are, are uh, and we have to, to be like true Hungarians again and, and, and a take over power again. A quick final question. I mean, there are some signs that Hungary and Russia is having more and better relations today. There are talks about Russia financing the main opposition party, extreme right-wing 
Jobbik party. Um, do you think that Hungary is drifting away from Brussels back to the arms of Moscow? That's, well, they, they, they are, uh, I mean, the government is f uh, in a way, but I think if, if, if poll, I mean, if polls would say that, that people don't like this, this, uh, this movement clo go, coming closer to Putin, I think he would, uh, Orban and his government would, would try to, to uh, step back a bit. Uh, but because also, actually, a couple of years ago, I think last year there was a poll. Yeah, I mean, even, even in Jobbik, the extreme right-wing party, 50, more than 50% are positive of the, to, of the Hungarian membership in the European Union. So it's, there's a contradiction there. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jina Jorshoya, Peter Karlsson, Ulf.